Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive Peer Exchange on novel concepts in the management of multiple myeloma. We continue to see dramatic shifts in the management of multiple myeloma. For newly diagnosed disease, we now have highly active regimens that achieve long-term remissions. In the relapse and refractory setting, we have successfully improved outcomes by combining next-generation agents and monoclonal antibodies. As many patients are living with chronic myeloma, we are making efforts to better address long-term complications and improve quality of life. During this expert panel discussion, my colleagues and I will discuss the newest information available to help guide decision-making in clinical practice. I am Dr. Keith Stewart, the Vasek and Anna Maria Pollock Professor of Cancer Research at the Mayo Clinic. Joining me for this discussion is Dr. Ivan Borello, Associate Professor of Oncology at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Director of the Cell Therapy Corps at John Hopkins Kimmel Cancer Center in Baltimore, Maryland. Dr. Sagar Lonil, Professor and Chair of the Department of Hematology and Medical Oncology at Emory University School of Medicine and the Chief Medical Officer of Winship Cancer Institute in Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Thomas Martin, Clinical Professor of Medicine and Associate Director of the Myeloma Program at the University of California, San Francisco, Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center in California. Dr. Gareth Morgan, Professor of Medicine and Director of the Myeloma Institute and Deputy Director of the Winthorpe P. Rockefeller Cancer Institute at the University of Arkansas for Medical Science in Little Rock, Arkansas. And Dr. Saad Usmani, Chief of the Plasma Cell Disorders Program and Clinical Professor of Medicine in the Department of Hematology, Oncology and Blood Disorders at the Levine Cancer Institute, Carolina's Healthcare System in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you all for joining this discussion. Let's begin. We're going to start off with a newly diagnosed patient and we're going to talk first about our goals of therapy today in 2017. And I'm going to start with you, Gareth. Uh, you're working at the University of Arkansas. There's a reputation there for treating myeloma fairly aggressively. So when you start treatment, what, what is the end, end game of your, your therapy? So I, I think things have changed in the last few years. So, um, it used to be sufficient to achieve a remission, but I think there is so much potential for residual delete disease to be left within that definition that people have started to use definitions of complete response that include MRD uh, status, by which I mean the level of residual disease. So and your I'll, goal when you start therapy is to aim for a very deep remission right off the bat? So, yeah, we. I think that is the aim of uh, treatment in the modern world, to achieve MRD negative complete remissions. And um, it, you don't have to achieve that in the first month, but it's ultimately where you should aim to get all patients. Saad, would you agree with that? What, what's your approach in the Carolinas? Um, I would agree with that uh, for, for younger, um, you know, more robust, robust transplant eligible patients. But for elderly patients, I think you have to compromise a little bit on efficacy uh, for their tolerability and safety. So yes, you know, achievement of a deep response is important for those patients, but it may take a little longer um, than, than the younger patients. And, and Ivan, it, it, does it matter how fast you get a response? Does that matter anymore? Is it is slow, slow better sometimes? I mean, I think if there's a patient that presents um, in extremis, in acute renal failure, um, then I think the rapidity of the reduction of the disease burden is important. But those fortunately are, are few patients. The vast majority, not necessarily. I, what I've seen is that as, as long as the trend is going in the right direction, and certainly I think that allows us to deliver therapy with potentially less intensity and less toxicity that can be done over a longer period of time. Maybe I'll just get the last uh, two of our panelists to comment on this quickly. Um, Tom, your approach in San Francisco? Yeah, I agree with uh, what my colleagues have said. We definitely try to treat patients to the deepest possible remission. We don't try to do it in the first week or the first month, but certainly our plan is over the first three to six months to try to achieve at least a CR, and if we do get a CR, to try to assess for MRD negativity. And the older population, again, I agree with, uh, with Saad that we really don't push them too hard, and I tell them you're gonna be on therapy potentially for upwards of a year, and hopefully each, each month it'll go down slowly, slowly, slowly. Let, let me just uh, ask you all, just in one sentence each, to tell us what, what is your frontline therapy of choice for both a younger and a, a more elderly patient? And uh, Saga, let's start with you. Yeah, I think for the transplant eligible patient, our, our upfront regimen of choice is bortezomib with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. 
um, I think for the older, truly frail patient, because I think everybody else we would put in that category, it's probably lenalidomide and dexamethasone, and now there may be talk about an antibody there. Gareth, I'm going to come to you last because I think you might be a little bit of an outlier, but uh, Ivan, what, what's your up front there? So, I mean, I agree with Sagar. It's uh, a proteasome inhibitor, an imid, and for the most part, we've been using bortezomib and lenalidomide. Uh, we have not adopted carfilzomib as an upfront therapy, not to say that maybe that won't change with new emerging data coming out. And, um, and if they're truly frail, then um, I think a two-drug regimen is probably a safer thing to do than a three. Although we have used three drugs, even in an elderly population, just less dose intensely. Any of you using carfilzomib on a routine, regular basis or still clinical trials, Tom? Yeah, I think in patients that are less than 50 years of age, we use carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone as our frontline Why therapy. Why 50? That's a pretty young cutoff. Why not uh, 55 we see a fair, or 60? Yeah, that's a good question. We, use, we see a fair amount of people that are less than 50. I will also do it in patients between age 50 and 60. Um, less than 50, they don't even bat an eyelash. They can take carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone to transplant and then more of that for upwards of a year to, to two years and have no problems whatsoever with the goal of achieving MRD negativity. Um, so I, also in patients that have high risk cytogenetics, say they have 17P deletion or 414 uh, deletion or 1Q gain, those patients also, I start right out of the gate with carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. Gareth, last word to you on this point. Um, so try and customize the induction regimen to to the patient. Uh, we still use combinations with some classic chemo agents in them, harvest stem cells and move on to some form of uh, stem cell transplantation, but aiming at each point in the process to achieve increasing um, remissions, aiming for MRD negativity ultimately.